Okay. The following four examples are all from the tips and techniques section at the end of chapter two of your textbook. And these all start on page 38. So you can follow this along with your textbook and watch the videos. But what I really suggest is that you make sure you do understand these because although they're all fairly simple and fairly quick to go over, they all represent some very easy mistakes that can often lead to frustration when your programs don't do what you expect to do. So for instance here what I have something very simple. I have a monkey on a ball and if you look at my instructions over here, I want the monkey to move forward one meter and then I want the ball to move forward one meter and I have them in a do together block so I, I, I should expect them to move forward together uh, one meter. Okay. But if I press the play button, again I'll zoom in so people can really get a good look at this, that's not what happened. Let me just hit the restart. Okay, they're moving one meter, but they are moving in different directions. So what's going on here? And what's going on here is that the forwards for these different objects are not the same. And I'm going to zoom in right on the object view, and this is kind of hard to see even when you're not watching on a video, but even on your own. If I click on the ball on the monkey, let's start with the monkey, and I uh, take a look at you know what I might just uh, go take a good look at this camera get a good look at this and I take a good look at this monkey there he is see the blue red and green line these represent the axes of this monkey the blue one is the forward axis the red one is the right axis and the green one is the up axis and when you give the monkey a move command or many of the other commands as well it's gonna move relative to these axes so when you say monkey move forward one meter it's gonna go forward based on what the monkey sees as being forward. So it's going to move forward for the monkey. Now let's click on the ball and you might start to see, I'm going to again go camera and get a good look at this. There's the ball. Whoa, that's a little... Okay, we'll, we'll rotate this around and stuff. Maybe I'll go to add objects. Okay. And we'll rotate this around so we can get a good look at this, but there's the blue axis for the ball. And that blue axis, again, is the forward axis. So the thing to notice is that the forward for the ball and the forward for the monkey, let's zoom out just a little bit. Whoop. There we go. The forward for the monkey and the forward for the ball are not the same forward. So the ball moves forward according to its direction, and the monkey moves forward according to its direction. Okay, I'm going to undo a bunch of times here. I want to get back to what we had at the start. So what do we got to do? Well, there's a few different ways to fix this, and I'll get into what those are in just a bit. There we go. Now we're back to what we want. But one way to fix this is to make sure the forwards of the two objects are the same. And I could fiddle around and uh, try and turn the object so that they're exactly the same, but that gets frustrating. There's a method that will do this for you. If you right-click on either the monkey or the ball, I'm going to do it on the ball because it's the ball I want to move, and I look at the methods, there is an orient to right there. Okay, toy ball to orient to, and then you can orient it to whatever object you want. And what it'll do is it'll set up the axes, the forward, right, and up axis, so it'll be the same as whatever object that you pick. I want these axes to be the same as the monkey and the entire monkey. Okay, so I'm going to click that, and the ball turns. You might have just caught that just at the end. And now when I run this particular program, they do what I want. They move together, okay, because now the forward for the monkey and the forward for the ball are the same. That's one way to fix it. Let's look at another way. We've got another program here. Uh, this one. No, I don't want to save it. So here I have a, a horse and a chicken. And I want him again to move forward. In a sense, what I want is I want the chicken to ride the horse is really what I want to do. So I, I got a command in here to have the horse move forward one meter. And the horse moves forward one meter. But of course the chicken stays exactly where it is because I never told the chicken to move. Now one thing I could do is I could have the chicken move forward one meter at the same time. I'd have to make sure the chicken and the horse are oriented the same way in order for that to work. But let's say I don't want to orient it. Or for that matter, putting in two commands all the time is a bit of a pain. There's a vehicle property that is really helpful. If I kick on the chicken, go to properties right here, and one of the properties is a vehicle. And the vehicle is saying, what is this object kind of attached to. And in this case, the object is attached to the world. 
I would like to change the vehicle, and you can change it to any object that you have in your world. I want to change it to the horse, and the entire horse, not a bit of the horse. Okay? So now the vehicle is the horse. What this means is now that the chicken is attached to the horse. And whatever I do with the horse, the chicken will follow along for the ride. And so just by that simple change, I don't have to change my program at all, the command in my program. I now press play, and now as the horse moves, the chicken moves with it. And I can do anything I want with the horse now if I want it all of a sudden say, let's make the horse turn. Let's make horse turn left, say a half a revolution, and I press play. You know, the chicken just is along for the ride. So that vehicle property can be very, very useful if you want objects to move together. Okay. Take another one. Again, these are coming at you real quick. This one, helicopter. Ah. All right. Now, I, I, if you look at the textbook, you'll see this isn't quite this. I can't even find the helicopter object or the scenery object that, that was the same, but I tried to create it as best I can. The idea is going to be the same. So what I got here is I got a helicopter, and I'm going to get the helicopter to do some stuff for me. And you can see from the commands what's going to happen. The helicopter is going to roll to the left. 0.15 of a revolution is going to do it over a duration of a half a second, and then it's going to move up uh, a half a meter for a duration of half a second. Okay? And so if I play this, you can see what it does. And again, the thing to notice is, is that the helicopter, I'll restart it, moves up according to what's up for the helicopter, which is, since the helicopter is on an angle, by the time it gets to the move command, that's going up at an angle. Okay. What if I didn't want it to go up according to the helicopter? What if I wanted to make it go up according to something else? Like, for instance, the ground. I wanted it to go straight up. Okay. Well, if I go to the more section, there are more attributes that I can add to this move up command. And one of these attributes is the as seen by. Okay? And I want it to move up as seen by the ground. Okay? So back up. So what now? It's not going to use the helicopters up to decide which direction to move. It's going to use the grounds up. And now when I play this game this this particular one, I'll restart it again. This time it moves up and it's moving vertically up. So, again, um, lots of different attributes in there. I would encourage you to actually get in there and play. We'll talk about more as we, as we progress through this course, but there's lots of them in there that can get you to do these things in exactly the way you want them to be done. One more and that's it. Oops. No, I don't want to save. And I don't want to do that either. I want this one, lifeboat. There we go. All right, so what do I want to do with the lifeboat? I want the lifeboat to turn and go towards this island. Okay, there's an island off in the distance. These guys are in a lifeboat. They're going, oh my gosh, there's an island there. I want to get rescued. So I have for my first command here, lifeboat point at island. So it'll take what's forward for the lifeboat and direct that axis towards the center of the island. Okay, which is what I want to want. I have an attribute here called effect yaw uh, only, and I set that attribute to be true. And what that's doing for me is that it will only affect the yaw, which is the horizontal turning of the lifeboat. It won't point it up, it won't point it down at all, which is what I want to do. I want to keep the ho lifeboat horizontal. Okay? And you might run into that from time to time, where you want something to point at something, but only horizontally, not vertically. And if I run that, it does what I want to do. There we go, points at it. And I might want to play with the duration and stuff. That seems to go kind of quick, but that's okay. I don't care about that. Now what I'm going to do is I want the lifeboat to go towards the island. So I'm going to use, I'm going to do something, and this might surprise you what ends up happening. I'm going to go, instead of, I'm going to go move to, uh, there it is, light, no, even, oh, I've got the lighthouse. I don't want to move the lighthouse. I want to move the lifeboat. And I want to move the lifeboat to, so I'm going to drag that over there. And what do I want to move the lifeboat to? I want to move the lifeboat to, not the lifeboat, but to the island, to the entire island. Okay, I'll zoom out again on that. So now I got, it's going to turn toward it, and then the lifeboat's going to move towards it. And here's something you might not expect to happen. So I'm going to play this, and we're going to see what happens. Boom, it goes zooming over there. But what did you notice happened? The lifeboat ended up right on top of the island. Let's look at that again. Okay, and this time I'm actually going to change my view to get a good look at the island, and I'm going to run the program from this view. So here comes the lifeboat, and look what it does. It ends up right into the island. When you use commands like move to, 
it's actually moving just the centers of those objects. So what it's doing is it's taking the center of the lifeboat and moving it to the center of the island. And sometimes that's not exactly what you want to have happen at all. You, you might want just the, you know, you obviously don't want the two objects to merge together here. There's no kind of collision detection that's built into this. In fact, we'll talk later how we can build in our own kind of collision detection so that it'll stop before it goes into the object. But that's an important thing to remember. When you're measuring distances or moving things from one to the other, it's only moving the centers around. And if that means that the two objects end up overlapping each other like this, then that's exactly what's going to happen. So perhaps in this case, this isn't what I want to do at all. Let's undo a couple things here. Uh, let's trash this line. And maybe what I'll do instead is maybe use something like move toward rather than move to. And maybe I move towards it. Uh, again, I want to move towards the island the entire island, but I'm only going to move a distance, I'll zoom in here, of two meters. And then I can play around with that distance if it's necessary. Let's see what that looks. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I moved the island. Did you see that I did that? The wrong object selected. Like, oh, that's what's good. I, got it. I can throw it in the trash. I can undo. Let's undo. There we go. That's the lifeboat, of course, that I want to move. Move the lifeboat to two meters towards the island. There we go. Okay, now we'll try that. That's a little better. And it moves towards. And it didn't move very far, so I obviously have to play around with that distances, but you get the idea. So this is a little exercise on some of these little finer details. Feel free to play around with these things, with these attributes. Get yourself kind of comfortable with it so that you can get these objects to do what they want. And when they don't do what you want or what you expect, Think about it for a second and see if you can puzzle out what's going on.